We were very pleased to see the overall results. Vaccine news continues to pour in. Today it was Oxford University and AstraZeneca saying their vaccine is highly effective, cheaper than other potential vaccines, as well as easier to store and ship. So let's talk about it with our nine health expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, and let's start with the data. What they did in the study, what it tells us as far as the immune response to the vaccine, what have we learned? So Tom, what's interesting is the efficacy of this vaccine was 70% on average, but they tried two different dosing regimens and they had very different responses. So the first was giving a half dose of the vaccine followed by a full dose about a month or more later. That actually had an efficacy of 90%. But if they give two full doses, one at, at day zero, one at least 30 days or more later, they saw an efficacy of only 62%. And I have to say that the scientific community was a little bit surprised by these findings because you would have expected the initial shot to trigger the immune system and then the booster to help it even more. But why should a half dose work better? And part of the reason for that, we think, is that maybe that, for, that full dose given initially actually triggers such a strong immune reaction that it may actually suppress the booster immune reaction. So we're not entirely sure, but it certainly does beg the question of whether we also need to think about these types of dosing regimens for some of the other vaccines. And that's where we all become very poor vaccine experts, but one shot's better than two. And also something that doesn't have to live at 100 degrees below zero also becomes better. Is that the AstraZeneca vaccine at this point? Those are the big edges you'd say over the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines, at least what we know to this point? Uh, that's exactly right. So storage is certainly a big piece of it because this can actually last for six months at normal refrigeration temperature. But I want to take even a step farther and talk about the, the type of vaccine this is. So this is a DNA vaccine, which has been around for decades, as opposed to the AstraZeneca and Moderna vaccines, which are RNA vaccines. So it's also much what's cheaper to manufacture. It only costs about two and a half dollars as opposed to Pfizer and Moderna, which are more in the 20 to $25 range. The storage, as we talked about, is certainly a consideration. The fact that this vaccine technology has been around for so long certainly makes us feel good about safety. Because if you recall, a few months ago, we had that transverse myelitis uh, adverse event occur that caused the trial to pause, but it seems like it may not be related to the vaccine. And then, of course, finally, this vaccine vaccine also seems to suggest that it suppresses asymptomatic infection, not just symptomatic, which is certainly another edge over the other. So I see a role for this vaccine, certainly in the low and middle income uh, countries, but also potentially in the United States. So medicine and research are your strengths, but I want to ask you a little bit about this from a business standpoint. Did these companies collaborate at all or is this entirely competitive and is there a chance that three vaccines will ultimately be made available to the public and the public will be choosing among the vaccines. You know, I think it's the latter, Tom. I, the companies collaborated to the extent that they've all really aligned on the mission of making affordable vaccines, of distributing them in a widespread fashion. But the mechanisms by which the vaccines work, the way in which they're manufactured, are so widely disparate. And in my opinion, that's actually a big boost because it really does give us the opportunity to have different mechanisms, different types of candidates, again, with different advantages and disadvantages. And what we're seeing with this one is the overall efficacy may be lower, but it's easier to manufacture, easier to distribute, potentially more longer term safety data. So certainly that has a niche as opposed to the AstraZeneca and Moderna ones, which are more efficacious, but a little more challenging to transport. It's hard to look forward to it when we think of all those big pharma ads that we now see all over our televisions. If they were to try to start marketing these and spending money on their vaccine versus another vaccine, as well as just the, the competitive nature uh, of these. It, it's going to be interesting to see in a variety of ways, but uh, we'll talk much more about this as it continues to go forward. Dr. Paul Coley, it's, it's always good to talk to you. Thanks.